Barrett, number 15, was part of the Australian team that lost 58-44 to Germany in the final of the Women's Wheelchair Basketball at the North Greenwich Arena on Friday. It was her first Paralympic final. Um, so when I was uh, born, the Achilles tendon in my left leg hadn't fully developed, so my foot was rotated around and the big toe was touching the side of my leg. because of the amount of tension that was caused. So from the ages of, well, about four days old, I went into physiotherapy and um, another method to try and bring my foot back around. Yeah. It was unsuccessful, so we chose surgical methods. Yeah. Um, so my first surgery was at three months old. And my last one was at seven years old on that leg. Yeah. But um, now, because it was on one side of my body and it stopped development, of certain parts. I've got no muscle development in the lower part of my leg, so my gastrocnemius and soleus muscle are very mm -hmm. underdeveloped. So I started playing Lucha basketball nine years ago um, at the age of 14 and it started off just as a very recreational sport for me and um, very, very quickly it grew into a real passion of mine and um, I broke into the international team within two years of starting playing. So yeah. then it became almost like my life <laughs> and it yeah. took over everything. So. From about 16 years on, um, I've just been training most days, eating everything properly, gymming all the time. Mm -hmm. um, I'm now at a point where I'm going out and teaching schools and young kids how to play wheelchair basketball and um, spreading the disability awareness message as well as yeah. um, the idea of invisible disabilities and passability. Sure. I'm also working with junior programs and individuals here in Perth, um, helping them improve as well as players. So. Yeah, it's being part of one big community, really. Yeah. <laughs> it all started from a different sport, it started from swimming. Yeah. So I swam from the age of two years old as a rehabilitation method. Yeah. Um, moved to Australia and got involved with wheelchair sports WA. And I was competing nationally for swimming and I went to a competition when I was 13 in Sydney. And there's a classification system across all sports with disabilities mm -hmm. and essentially I was told I was too able-bodied to be a disabled swimmer. Yep. So then I jumped into able-bodied swimming and I was told I was, told I was too disabled to be an able-bodied swimmer because my legs weren't matching up. So yeah. I was thrown in a real grey area and for six months I tried to fight the system but one little person against a whole system. Yeah. Is it going to work? No. So um, my coach threw me into basketball. and. Uh -huh. Yeah, he, well he sat me in a chair and he said shoot your first shot and I got it in and he said there you go, you are ready? Your new sport. New sport. <laughs> Alright! <laughs> the initial shock, especially with the general public when I tell them that I play wheelchair basketball, mm. that's probably the biggest thing I've really seen and it's just because people don't understand that disability is a lot more than just a wheelchair and amputation. Exactly. So um, that's one big thing that's come out of it really is trying to teach the idea that you know disability is a lot more than just two little things or a yeah. visual of hearing impairments. Sure. So, um, but people are usually very open-minded. Some people think I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm like, no, I actually do play. <laughs> just been the biggest supporters of my life and yeah. I think they always just believe they wanted me to succeed in whatever I tried. Sure. Um, so I mean my dad when I swam he was like, carbo loading me before competitions mm -hmm. and making sure I was eating everything properly and during competitions he'd be there to help me stretch out and stuff and even now to the point where he does all my mechanics on my wheelchair for me. Sure. Yeah so that's really handy and um, my partner he He's really immersed himself into it now. He hates sports, so yeah. <laughs> it's a really interesting dynamic. But yeah. I mean, he stayed up many nights helping me fix push rooms and reweld parts of my chair. And yeah. yeah, wheelchair sports definitely were the biggest driving forces into trying just to push me into another sport yeah. um, and keep me within the organisation. I think, and yeah, I guess it was they knew it was going to be an uphill battle. Whichever I tried, but they, they could also recognize I really loved sport and I really loved the community that I was a part of within them. So, yeah, they were really good. And yeah. you know, even now to the point where I'm kind of working for them with the whole real life clinics and stuff and going and teaching. So, 
They gave me a lot. I try and give as much back as they gave me. I started in 2009 for the international women's team. Yeah. Um, so I was a bit behind with everyone. And then, you know, you start solidifying yourself within the international squad. So for Australia, I started travelling to the World Championships and then the Under-25 World Championships. I was training every single day. The coach, I was very lucky, he was from Perth, so he was monitoring everything I was doing here and I was holding myself extremely accountable for everything that was happening. And we, it was just a matter of going to a training camp with the final 14 girls. And then, yeah, we all had to sit outside one room. We got called in one by one and then got told yeah. <laughs> if you're going or not. Yeah. Oh, wow. So usually with like the whole selection criteria, um, the year leading into a Paralympics or a World Championships, your top 16 or top 18 will be the girls that you take to a camp. Yeah. I mean, you all compete against each other and then you'll slowly start bringing it right down to from 18 to 16, 16 to 14, yeah. until your final cut. And then the process after that is I can't actually tell people for about a month oh. if I'm going or not. For a very long time, there was this this stigma that went around with athletes with disability. It was like, oh, they're just giving it a try, good work, sort yeah. of thing. Very condescending. And then the Paralympics really started taking off and especially um, like Beijing was a massive one and yeah. then from that point London took it over and then people were just in absolute awe. Um, the reality is that we train just as hard as every other elite athlete yeah. on the planet. Yeah. If not we might train a little bit harder and we also, there are some athletes out there who overcome extreme diver like adversities to get to the point where they're at, you know, we look at for instance there's a Paralympian now Curtis McGrath who four and a half years ago lost both his legs mm -hmm. in an IED in Afghanistan I think it was. Yeah. So he went through immense amount of trauma to overcome um, to then become a Paralympic gold medalist in Rio this year so sure. it's pretty insane and I think now recognition's happening more and more and this like sponsors are coming through and sponsoring other athletes yeah. and really getting on board the whole Paralympic message but it's not finished yet. No. Um, there's still a very long way to go especially in third world countries and other you know Thailand and yeah. even in, within our zone of Asia Oceania um, for someone to have a limitation or a physical disability is almost shamed upon. Yeah, sure. Um, especially kids going into orphanages because their families don't want to have a child with a yeah. disability. So there's still a really long way to go, but we're getting better every single day. People running group fitness classes and stuff are yeah. really good at just trying to figure something out and creating a an alternative for the mm -hmm. person with a limitation. Um, so if it's, it might be a matter of just calling up the centre and being like, hi, look, I'm interested in coming into your class, but I have a wheelchair, or I'm missing a limb, or I can't do this because I've got weaknesses, then it, it, they'll figure it out and they'll create an alternative. And yeah. I think sometimes it can be a matter of pride for yeah. some people, they don't want to admit it, sure. but yeah, it makes it a lot easier on the people running those classes. And, you know, to get involved within sports and stuff, it's just having a crack, getting in touch with your local organisation. And um, luckily, a lot of sporting organisations around Perth now are linked with wheelchair sports. So yeah. you might start swimming, and then they'll say, "Okay, if you really want to take it, we'll get you in touch with these guys, and they'll start pushing you into the right avenues." I'm not defined by my disability. I'm not defined by the fact I was born with a twisted foot, mm -hmm. but I am defined by the journey that it's taken me on sure. and the people that I've met because of it. Yep. And the, I've been very, very fortunate along my sporting journey to to achieve so much within sport and come out really quite strong on the other side. So yeah, that's sure. what defines, but I don't think a disability defines a human. I can't really see myself having much of a life not as an athlete. Yep. Um, and I think that's purely because I've grown up in a very athletic lifestyle. And yep with family being very athletic and then me now progressing on into international sport. Mm -hmm. I'd like to think and I'd like to hope that people also see that I've tried to make the most of that that journey. There's no doubt that it comes with its hardships. Yep. I mean the amount of times I've had a mental breakdown because I've been training six days a week. Sure. I've been trying to maintain my diet mm -hmm. and then I just sit there and I'm like, what am I really doing this all for? Am I and then 
trying to go through that moment, but yeah. most of the time I come out of it just like, oh, I've had my, have my cry, I'm okay. The next one, yeah. <laughs> I like to see where sport takes me. Yep. I don't make many plans based around it. Mm -hmm. Just like to get it done, I guess, go yeah. out and do the job and um, just make myself as physically fit as possible. And the most important thing with playing a disability sport is just continuing to spread the positive Paralympic message and yeah. start raising more awareness around disability sports. I'm aiming for Tokyo 2020 now, so Rio's over and done with, so that's my next four year cycle starts this week yeah. with a national camp in camp.